Hey everyone, it's Ivan, kitbadger.com, here to bring you another gun review, and today I'm talking about this guy right here, which is the RF-15 by Radical Firearms, 10 and a half inch, 762 by 39. At the heart of it, what is it? It is a little AR pistol, chambered in, 762 by 39. So to that end, you actually have magazines that take set around. Granted, they have kind of a weird curve to them. These are 20 rounders but you basically get a 7.62 by 39 gun with all of your standard controls as far as a AR platform goes. As far as safety selector, mag release, all that stuff, which can be a huge benefit if you're coming into it with a lot of experience shooting ARs versus like an AK platform. If you have followed my content, you might remember that when I first had this thing, I had some issues with it. I was basically getting a lot of light strikes, like lots of light strikes. So I reached out to them. I said, hey, this is a problem I've had. They said, no problem. Send it back. We'll take care of it. And I did just that. Sent it back. They attempted to take care of it. I believe they ended up replacing the firing pin. I think the firing pin that was in there was a little too short. Sent it back. Still had some issues with light strikes. Not sure if... It had to do with basically the trigger spring in here not being strong enough to hit some of those hard primers. A lot of 7.62 by 39 ammo is like Russian surplus ammo, hard primers, all of that. But after sending it twice back to them, it came back to me that third and final time. And since then, it's worked great. Put a lot of rounds through it. Well, this originally shipped with a A2 birdcage and also a longer rail who wants to shoot unsuppressed when they can shoot suppressed so to that end i was like eh, i want to shoot this thing suppressed but there wasn't quite enough room for especially depending on what type of suppressor i was going to put on here i ran a couple different suppressors so to that end busted out the saw cut this thing down and made it work since then i've shot it quite a bit using a couple different suppressors and for the most part, actually having it more or less in this configuration using these peak iron sights by Scalarworks. And this amazing sling, which I may or may not ever review by, I don't know, Antilla or something like that. And this is a bungee sling, two point to single point. Leaves some things to be desired, but I did actually end up putting a lot of rounds through this gun, mainly through a Rune Nation carbine course. I ended up shooting this through that entire course and yeah, running with a can, running with these iron sights and getting after it. Overall, during that course, this gun actually did a really good job for me. The only issue I had come up, which honestly probably was not the gun, it was either magazine related and or self-induced in that occasionally I'd go to drop the magazine and it would not want to drop free. Happened really just kind of with this one magazine, not this one. And more than likely that one magazine was a little bit out of spec or it was out of spec once I painted the magazine, but that was the only issue I ran into in that course. Again, running it with these peak iron sights and running it suppressed. 
It's actually a pretty fun gun to run through that course. Afterwards, I was like, I wonder what this gun is capable of. And eventually went out, dressed this thing up, and got behind it, trying and see what kind of groups I could shoot. To try and get the most out of this gun, kind of tried to set it up so it was more conducive to trying to shoot groups. And because I like things quieter, went ahead and threw this full Nelson silencer on here by Q. And then I topped the gun with a 5x25 optic by EOTech and went ahead, swapped out the lower receiver. I ended up putting on a lower receiver that is SBR'd so that I could have a really nice stock, get a good cheek weld with a Geisley Super Dynamic Enhanced trigger in there, hopefully help with those groups. And then with a dovetail adapter from Sawtooth Rifles, I was able to attach it to a pretty sweet tripod, being able to shoot my groups off of. That tripod there, Recon Tripod, by two vets sporting goods. So with that set up, shot a number of five shot groups and here's what I got with some different ammo. Starting out with some Tula 122 grain full metal jacket. My first group came in at 1.49 MOA. With my second group with that Tula 122 grain coming in at 2.19 MOA. Moving on to some Hot Shot, 123 grain, full metal jacket. First group coming in at 2.22 MOA. And my second group with that Hot Shot coming in at 1.86 MOA. Moving over to some Red Army Standard, 122 grain, full metal jacket. First group coming in at 1.81 MOA. And the second group opening up a little bit at 2.29 MOA. When I went to shoot some Fiocchi 124 grain full metal jacket, brass cased, for whatever reason, the point of impact shift was huge, dropped really low. And so rather than trying to shoot at the bottom target, I just went ahead and shot all 10 rounds with that group coming in at 4.00 MOA. Next, using some Wolf 122 grain full metal jacket. First group came in at 3.02 MOA. And my last group with that Wolf 122 grain coming in at 3.03 MOA. Could someone have squeezed a little more out of this gun than me if they were behind it that day? Maybe. It was definitely cold out. It's probably in the low 20s. But that's what I got out there that day with that setup. And what are my thoughts? You know what? It's a 10 and a half inch barrel shooting 7.62 by 39. Average across there, probably like two inch groups at 100, about two MOA. I don't think that's terrible for 7.62 by 39, especially out of a short little barrel. But that's when I ended up getting out there that day. Having said all that, what are my thoughts on this little gun? There's a weird kind of little paradox here in that I think there's definitely some QC issues going on. But what's weird is contrasting that with, I don't know, there's little niceties like enlarged bolt catch bolt release or ambidextrous safety or a grip that's not just like the kind of atrocious A2 grip that I really don't care for. But then at the same time, it's like, why wasn't the right firing pin in this to begin with? Now granted, I will say to Radical Firearms credit, they did a good job. They paid for the shipping, getting this thing there and back, did it twice and got this thing back to me and got it running. And once this is running, did a really good job. This thing is incredibly dirty because once I finally got rid of this little bit of rail using a saw, pretty much just shot it suppressed. And as long as I keep this thing oiled, it will run. The only issues I've ran into since I got it back that second time was like I mentioned, was that one magazine, which is honestly probably has something to do with that magazine being out of spec. And all in all for, I don't know, sub $700, I think these retail for around 660 bucks. Yeah, it's done a pretty good job. I think my favorite thing about it honestly is it's chambered in 7.62 by 39. 
You can talk about all of the great things with respect to AKs, ergonomics not being among them. And if you want something that is actually chambered in 762 by 39, but maybe you have a lot of time behind a AR platform, this is really nice because you have all those same controls that you're familiar with and yeah, you make it work. If you're looking for one, you may or may not find one because it's 2021 as of filming this. And even if you find one, you might not find ammo. I think, as I mentioned, the real benefit for me, this being able to be chambered in 7.62 by 39. So we have the ergonomics of an AR, but we have the capability of a different cartridge that is not usually found in this platform. If you have any experience with one, love to hear how it's done for you. And if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbatcher.com, picking up stickers, kbatch target pads, or supporting me directly through Patreon, especially appreciate that. Helps me go out, create more content for you guys. And if you have questions, probably not going to be in the comments section, but if you want to get a hold of me over at Patreon, we actually have a Discord where I'm more than happy to answer all those questions. And as always, Thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.